G'day guys, welcome back to another video. So today's video is gonna be all about how to properly and safely clean the engine bay of your four wheel drive. So let's get straight into it. Okay, so just before we get into how to wash the engine bay, just quickly a couple of reasons why we wanna keep that engine bay nice and clean. So the first one is that of appearance. It's nothing better than opening a bonnet and seeing a nice clean engine underneath. And that's also gonna keep you nice and clean as well when you wanna do some trackside or roadside repairs or your daily maintenance. Now in addition to that, another one is being able to detect any issues with the vehicle inside the engine bay nice and early and easily. So a nice clean engine bay is gonna show up things like oil leaks or blowing into cool hoses, leaking hose clamps, loose bolts, a lot easier than an engine bay that is covered in dirt and muck. Keeping on that theme as well, cleaning your engine bay regularly is just going to prevent any long-term buildup of dirt and uh, grime on some of the parts that you might need to access such as screws, sensors, hose clamps and bolts that you might need to use and access when you do some maintenance or some trackside repairs. Keeping a nice clean engine bay and protecting that engine bay as well is also going to prolong the longevity of all your sensitive areas of your vehicles such as these plastics, radiator hoses, electrical wiring, seals and all those other things if washed properly and using the correct techniques. So we'll go into that and how to do that today. Okay guys, so before we start, these are all the things that you're going to need to make sure you clean an engine bay nice and well. So, first thing we have as well, if you have an older four-wheel drive, or maybe a petrol four-wheel drive, or anything with some sensitive components on it, you're going to want to make sure that you bag them up and uh, protect them from the direct impact of any water spray. So you can do that by just grabbing some plastic bags, some sort of tape, I'll just use painter's tape if I need to, and uh, tape those areas off so they don't have direct water impact and cause any dramas through there. Obviously you're going to need some sort of water source, so I just use a normal garden hose with one of those selectors on the end that allows me to change the water spray and the pressure of the water there. You can use a high pressure hose, but I wouldn't recommend using it on the high pressure itself. It just could cause some damage to some delicate seals and delicate areas of the engine bay. Moving on from that, use a selection of brushes and sponges here. So I use an old uh, sponge here that's no longer used for the, uh, the paintwork on the exterior of the car. And then I've got a selection of brushes, just going from scrubbing brushes, wheel brushes, and uh, these sort of like paintbrush type style brushes come in extremely handy for getting into those tight sections. So I've got a thick bristled one there, and then I've got a, section, a selection of four ones there with some softer bristles as well. In addition to chemicals I'm gonna be using, it's just gonna be a basic uh, degreaser that we're gonna be using today to get rid of all of that dirt and muck. So you can just go for your normal $2 cans. This is just from Super Cheap Auto. It does the job quite well. But in today's instance, I'm gonna be trying out this product I bought recently. Uh, it's the Chemtech CT14 degreaser. So uh, you just mix this up as per the instructions, depending on how strong you want it to be with a uh, bunch of water there. And it's gonna get you a nice degreasing agent, which I'm gonna be mixing it in a pressure sprayer bottle. And it's gonna make it nice and easy to apply into the engine bay. When you go to dry out your car, it's very important to make sure you get all the water out of the engine bay, especially the little pools of water that are sitting on top of the engine and other areas around the bay. So to do that, I'm just gonna be using a air compressor I've got hooked up today. So this makes it extremely easy to blow those uh, little bits of remaining water out of the nooks and crannies that you just can't get a chamois to. Once we've got all the engine bay cleaned up and looking good, I'm just gonna put some of the Meguiar's Trim Restorer on some of the black plastics. This is gonna give it a nice deep uh, shine to the black plastics, but it's also gonna help protect them, and it's going to prevent dirt from sticking to it in the future, meaning the next time we're gonna clean our engine bay, it's gonna make it even easier again. So a couple of quick tips before you start. Make sure you're working on a cold engine. This engine has not been started today, so it's nice and cool. If you work on a hot engine, it's just gonna dry up any water and any chemical you put on it. It's gonna leave ugly water spots and just make your job that much more difficult. Also, working in the shade or an overcast day like it is today is definitely gonna help as well. In addition to that, make sure you remove all jewelry, watches, rings from your hands. They're just gonna get in the way, potentially scratch some of these plastics up and also potentially get hooked on some uh, parts like your electronics as well. So before you start, make sure you do an uh, inspection of your engine bay. Make sure everything's as it should be, everything's sealed tight, all your bolts are tied down and your hoses are clamped properly. And make sure there's no obvious signs of oil leaks or other issues, because when you wash them away, it's gonna be much harder to detect. First thing to do, make sure we get a nice clean in is remove any easy to remove plastic covers. So this one here and the front one, they pop off. So this one here is just two 10 mil bolts.
And then lifting up at the bottom and pulling towards the front of the vehicle, we'll remove that plastic component. Okay, so to get underneath this panel here, just a whole bunch of these uh, plastic clips, and uh, just by pushing them in, we'll release the clip, and you better pull those straight out. That is a good idea as well, if you're gonna do this frequently, try and get a few of these clips on hand, because they do tend to break, and then uh, you can't reuse them again. Now on my vehicle here, I do have an Anderson plug wired into here so it can't fully be removed, but I'll get it out of the way the best I can. So like I mentioned earlier, today we're gonna to be using the Chemtech CT14. This is an engine degreaser, and it's safe to use on all components of the engine. Uh, you just mix it up with a uh, preset amount of water you got there, and we'll see how it works today. Okay, so just like when you're washing your car, you wanna start from top to bottom. So we're gonna start with the inside of the uh, top of the bonnet there. Just with this heat shield though, you're gonna to wanna to try to avoid that where you can. It can uh, make it quite heavy, and those, uh, the material that it's made of is pretty sensitive as well. So if you're gonna continue to scrub that, it will just tear apart. So uh, we'll try and avoid the heat shield, but we clean these plastic ducts in the center and the frame around it. As we can see here, just by spraying the heat shield with a bit of water there, a lot of the dirt came out with any of that hard scrubbing contact. So now while the degrees are sitting there, it's a good time to grab some brushes and just agitate that around and give that a quick scrub. So while washing your engine bay, try and avoid allowing the degreasing agent to dry by either adding a little bit more degreaser or rinsing it down periodically. Once you give it a good scrub, just make sure you give it a thorough rinse down to get rid of all that degreaser. Okay, so now that we've got that top section done, now to repeat the same down the bottom. So give it a quick rinse over, spray it down with a degreaser, agitate it with all the brushes that we've got here, and then rinse it off thoroughly. When rinsing your engine, try and avoid spraying high pressure straight into your electronics or onto the electrical plugs. Although they are waterproof, they're not designed to withstand high pressure water ingress. So you can see here how handy it is to have that constant flow pressurized spray bottle when applying the degreasing agent to the engine bay. When scrubbing the engine, just avoid scrubbing the top of the intercooler. The intercooler is made up of lots of delicate fins and hard contact will damage and bend these, reducing its efficiency in cooling turbo intake temperatures. Cleaning your engine can be as taken as far as you want. Although I'm not seeking a show car finish, I do like a clean engine bay and will spend some time getting as much dirt and dust out as possible. The time and effort scrubbing and brushing is completely up to you. So keep in mind, if you have taken off some removable plastic covers, you're gonna to have to wash them as well. So make sure you leave enough degreaser and uh, get to washing those parts that you've removed. As you can see here, I avoid directly scrubbing the silver text on this panel. This is only painted on and scrubbing it with degreaser will cause it to peel away, leaving an unsightly finish. Okay, so grabbing a chamois that we don't ordinarily use on the paintwork of the vehicle, let's try and go up as much of that water as possible. Again, drying the engine bay can be done as thoroughly as you wish. However, keep in mind a dry engine bay won't attract dirt on the first drive like a wet one. The drier you get the area, the better. Once all that bulk water is removed, this is where the air compressor comes in real handy to get into all those little cracks and crevices and all the areas where the water just pulls and this will just blow it out and you're able to dry it all out. So uh, let's get that done. 
So if you're going to use an air compressor to dry your engine like I do, be mindful of those electrical components and the plugs and other sensitive areas around your engine bay. Try and blow the water away from these areas and not directly into them. So you can see here just how much water compressed air can get out of the plastic conduit cable that a cloth or chamois just can't reach. Also note that I'm avoiding that strip of foam there between the radiator and the frame as the compressed air would likely cause damage. Okay, so once you've got all that water dried up, it's now time to start the car and you might find some water splashes around from the moving parts like your belts and your fans. So that's the case, let's dry that up and we're almost done. So next thing to do is if you have removed some covers, make sure to stick them back on. Okay, so the way in which to reuse these Toyota factory clips is when you pull them out, you push them in and they pop out that way. To reuse them, you push the bottom part all the way through and pull that right up to the top. You then squeeze these little fins together. You better push it through the hole then push it down to be nice and flush. If you do push it all the way down, you have to pull it back out and reset it. So it's common as well when you do push these all the way up and then try and push these back in, that these little plastic bits here do snap off. That's why it's a good idea to always have more of these on hand. So I'm gonna give all the panels a quick spray down with this uh, Gion Prep product. Just removes any contaminants before we stick on the trim detailer. So I'm just gonna finish off here by using a little bit of this dash and trim restorer. So it's just gonna help uh, protect the panels and uh, also give it a nice deep shine as well as making it easy to clean off next time. So you just apply that using one of these pads here and then wipe off with a microfiber towel. Okay, so there you have it. That is how to clean and detail your engine bay. And uh, I'll check out some of the results now. It's turned up really, really well. So this is a really good way to um, make sure that engine bay is nice and clean whenever you want to do your maintenance on it. But also to help detect those faults and issues easier. You better see when something starts leaking or something starts going wrong. And uh, another benefit as well is if you are trying to sell your car, this is definitely going to make your car look really good and uh, maybe increase that resale value. So the only other thing that I will do now is just quickly give the front of the car a wash on the outside, just making sure that none of that degreaser is going to be stuck on the paintwork on the exterior and also all the accessories on the front of your car and your bull bar and your headlights and whatnot. So give it a quick wash down, make sure you get all that degreaser off on the outside of your vehicle and you're good to go. So I hope you enjoyed today's video, I hope it found it informative and I hope you learned something and how, how to wash and look after your engine bay. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe to our channel. We're going to be sticking on a few of these videos um, in regards to our 200 series and our van. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, guys.